the eclipse and all the stuff you guys want to know about. So eclipse, it's in Aries and it's known as a hybrid eclipse. How cool is this? So what's a hybrid eclipse, you ask? I will tell you. So a hybrid eclipse is when the eclipse is seen as a total eclipse in some parts of the world, meaning that it completely obscures the sun because a solar eclipse is when the moon passes between earth and sun. So if you're on earth, you don't see the sun. An annular eclipse is when the, that same thing happens, but you can see the rim of the sun. It does, isn't total. And so that's why this is a, called a hybrid eclipse, because in some parts of the world, it's total. And in other parts of the world, it's not a total eclipse. You can still see the sun. Here in New York, we're actually not going to be able to see it because it's going to be happening in the evening at night, actually around midnight for us on the 20th of April. Um, but only 3% of all eclipses in the 21st century are hybrid eclipses. So that's very interesting. So what does that mean to me when I think about that from a spiritual perspective, from a meaningful perspective? Well, obviously the parts of the world that are having the sun completely obscured are going into darkness when they're not supposed to, right? So that's the um, spiritual meaning of eclipse. It's light and dark. Eclipses reveal things because they pass in front of one of our luminaries, completely hiding it and then reveal it again. Very symbolic for revelations in our life, things being revealed. We have to go into the dark sometimes to really see or appreciate or understand our spiritual um, contracts and our soul's purpose, right? So that's kind of the um, meaning behind eclipses, generally speaking. And then when we look at eclipses, we look at where they're taking place, what part of the sky, um, what planets are in transit with it. This eclipse is extremely powerful, and I'm going to go really quickly into why. Um, this is actually the second new moon in Aries. Um, we had one in March, so it's the second one in a row for new moons, which is also very rare. It happens when the calendar, depending on the rotation. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is this is a solar eclipse, new moon in Aries on the 20th. Now, I know today is only the 10th. But this next 10 days are going to go very, very quickly. Why? Because Aries energy is super fast. Aries energy is completely forward movement moving. Remember, I talked about the ram. That's the animal. That's the archetype for Aries. So it wants to move forward. It's speedy. It's fast. The next 10 days are going to go like that. And the rest of April is going to go like that. The last half of April is very intense, very fast paced, and really picked up. So that is also because we have five planets in Aries along with this new moon and the eclipse. So we're really overpowered. We're, we're overflowing with Aries energy. The ruler of Aries is Mars, the god of war. So that's why people are a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more cranky, a little bit more impulsive, a lot of Aryan energy flying around, fire energy, um, impulsivity. So that's the first thing is that that Aries energy is really, really playing into this. Now, because Aries energy is so quick and pushy and forward thinking and impulsive and, and aggressive and assertive, we're going to see timelines change. This is like major timeline jumps. You might, you know, be driving in the car and all of a sudden you arrive at your destination. You're like, how did I get here? What, I don't even remember passing the normal things that I usually pass. Well, that's going to happen in this energy. You're also going to feel like maybe having an afternoon or a morning where time seems to creep by and then all of a sudden it's evening. It's going to really be strange feeling time in this energy. Um, why? Because Aries is such a fast paced energy and we have other energies that are a little bit slower playing out on the Zodiac right now. As a matter of fact, we have very little air in the chart at all, which is why if some of you are feeling a feeling of, um, maybe you're feeling your, your nasal problems and your allergies are much worse this year, or you're having trouble breathing, or you can't catch your breath, or you just feel smothered or suffocated or situations that you've been in for a long time feel more constricting. We have no air in, in the Zodiac right now. So we all need something to be refreshing us. That's what this new moon is going to do because right after this new moon, um, we've got some planets changing signs, which will bring in more air to the chart. So this is an incredibly dynamic, fast, impulsive energy, and we can feel it building up already. Now, when we have new moons, they obviously are in a cycle of a moon cycle with, you know, 28, 30 days. But eclipses are energy that comes in and you can feel it a couple of months before, which I think we've all been ramping up a little bit. But eclipse energy also lasts for six to 18 months afterwards, depending on how powerful it was in your particular birth chart. 
So this isn't like April 20th, everything's going to change and the world's going to wake up and the world's going to be completely different. It may be that for some people, but this is a gradual change. What this eclipse represents is the ignition point of all of these new beginnings and changes. So really pay attention of what's happening between now and April 20th. What's coming to light? What is um, the, the themes that are coming into your life? Wherever Aries is in your chart, whatever house that affects, that's what these themes are going to be about. My Aries and my chart is my fourth house. That's all home and, and where I live and family. Um, so I know whenever we have a lot of planets in Aries, I'm very focused on family. Maybe I'll see family. My brother's actually coming to visit me from out of state. Um, yesterday I spent time with family, which I usually don't do on Easter. Um, so it's been a very family highlighted time in my life. Also, I know I'm going to be expecting changes. I'm in the process now of purchasing another property and things like that. So I know that this is going to affect me that way. And this, these changes will last for a long time. This is all about new beginnings. And for me, I know like the, for instance, the property that I'm buying, you know, a home, even though I'm not going to be living there for quite some time, if ever, um, it's a second property for me that will be a chance at a new beginning for something. So this is the type of energy. So look where Aries is in your chart. Now, there's five planets in Aries right now. The sun and moon, of course, are going to hit there because that's why it's going to be an eclipse. The sun and moon are together. Jupiter is in Aries. Jupiter expands everything. Chiron is in Aries. That's our wounds, where our wounds come from, the wounds we bring into this lifetime in order to heal them. And then the fifth planet that's in Aries right now is a planet called Eris. Eris is the goddess of discord. Eris, a lot of people call her the bad witch you have to invite to the party because if you don't, something bad's going to happen. Because the story of Eris is that Eris was not invited to a party and so she arranged for the people at the party to eat some poison apples. So that's the mythology behind Eris. You can find that online and read it. But basically, Eris is the goddess of discord. And usually when Eris is highlighted in a chart, um, it, it causes um, people to take revolutionary ideas and enact on them. It makes people fight. It makes people be discord, in discord. So those are the five energies that we have in Aries, plus Aries is ruled by Mars, the god of war. So that's why we have all this aggressive energy, but we can still use that for really good practical purposes and in order to grow our life forward. This is an energy for change. And I know we've been talking about energy for change for a long time, that's because back in October, November, December, leading up till now, I kept saying to you, in March, we start hitting a point where everything changes. Pluto changes signs, Saturn changes signs, a lot of things change. Now, this is the ignition point for all of those changes. So this is the energy of change. Very, very important to stay in love because as the energy comes in and starts changing certain things, wherever it's highlighted in your chart, you're going to see people around you, situations around you may come in to test you because it's Aries energy. And Aries energy is all about the I am. It's all about our self-sufficiency. It's all about who we are as people. It's about soul growth. Aries is an energy, if you have an Aries person in your life or you're an Aries, they're very self-assured. They're very self-sufficient. They're, they're the ram. They come in the room. They know exactly what they want. They're going to get it even if they're a little bit impulsive. They can be aggressive, but they're certainly no shrinking violets. They're certainly not insecure people. They are people who forge the course, stay the course, and to a certain point, they go after it. After they reach a certain pinnacle, they like to delegate. That's why your CEOs of companies are very Aryan energy. But Aries is an energy of assertion. It's also this particular um, energy is a north node eclipse as opposed to a south node. North node eclipse means it's about our destiny. It's about our soul mission. It's about our fate. So put all that stuff I just said together and what does it mean in a couple of sentences? This eclipse is going to wreck things. This eclipse is going to come in. It's going to be really aggressive. It's going to break things down. It's going to crumble old structures. Why? Because anything that's not of your sole purpose, this eclipse over the next few months is going to bring that to highlight. It's going to bring that to a level of intolerance so that you have to change it. Aries energy is all about how have I changed and grown to understand myself? What are the blockages in your way preventing you from doing that? 
this eclipse is going to tear them down. That's that's it in a nutshell. Then we have other things happening right alongside this eclipse. First thing is the North Node that's really affecting this eclipse in July, that goes into Aries. So leading up to that, it sets up a very intense energy for the next 18 months. But it's intense energy that we can use to propel our life forward. It can be really motivating if we stay out of the conflict, out of the discord that Eris is going to cause, and out of the destruction that Pluto squaring this eclipse is going to cause. Pluto is the planet of transformation. Pluto transforms by destroying things on us. It doesn't do that to be mean. It does that because in the end, we're grateful. Um, you know, the things that we can't see, we have a blind spot about. Well, Pluto comes in and, and changes them so that we're like, wow, that was one of the hardest times of my life, but I'm so grateful for it because it brought me where I am now. So it's really almost like a healing crisis. But the beautiful thing about this is that we emerge with a sense of self and self-sufficiently that we've ne sufficiency that we've never had before. That's the whole point of Arian and Aries energy. Out in the collective, this is going to be an angry energy for some people. It's going to be a push because when we're pushed into developing our sense of self, for some people, that's really overwhelming. And when people are overwhelmed, they're scared. So when people are scared, they're angry right? Um, for some people, they don't want things to crumble, even if they're blocking their path in life. They want everything to stay the same. So they're going to get angry when those things are, are dismantled. Pluto in Aquarius is all about how do we fit into the community, the world, and really embody what we came here to do. That's the message of Pluto in Aquarius. It doesn't give us that message gently. Unlike Saturn, who's the authority and restricts things, Pluto comes in and, and breaks the energy. And during this eclipse, Pluto is squaring the eclipse. So this is really about us coming into our own selves, our own sufficiency, our own growth, our soul's purpose. And I know that might sound really lofty for a lot of you, but quite frankly, isn't that what has to happen in the world? And isn't that really what's wrong with the world is we're all so distracted by things that we really shouldn't even be giving attention to anyway. So maybe we have to have some of those things removed so that we really give our soul the attention it deserves. You know, what is your soul asking you to do? Um, you know, we sit here in the soul space every Monday and I know you guys like cards and predictions and a lot of you want to get in touch with lost loved ones who are on the other side. And I think that's fabulous that we can do that and that we all have the ability to connect that way. And it's a beautiful community, but when the show's over and, you know, or you read one of my posts online and it inspires you, well, when you walk away from that, what do you do? Do you just think about it or do you, you know, put something into action? Do you make the change? How have you grown and how have you changed to be your true self, your true soul purpose in your life? And it doesn't have to be a lofty or grand gesture. It could simply be maybe you're not taking good care of your body and you finally realize, wow, I really need to change some things up and take better care of my body. Maybe you're giving too much to your loved ones and you need to pull that back and take care of yourself more. Maybe you're not giving enough to a partnership and you need to step up and, and be the man or be the woman that you really need to be. That's, that's authentic to you. It doesn't mean you're going to go out and change, change the world drastically. It doesn't mean we're going to, you know, become Oprah Winfrey or Eckhart Tolle or any of those things. It just means that we're supposed to live our purpose, who we are. And so this eclipse is aspecting a lot of things. And really, when you look at it, if you really take some time to go into love and go into quiet, instead of getting out there and all that energy, this is really a turning point for humanity. You know, and you might think that's an overstatement, you might think that's melodramatic, but it's really not. Because if we really took a minute to feel this energy, you're going to see where it's supposed to lead you, you're going to start to feel the gut. guidance of the stars and the moon and, and the planets and, and the universe and our creator, you know, the same energy that created all of those beautiful planets and the world and, and the energy that we feel when we hug somebody and the energy I feel when I give Reiki, along with the energy of anger and the negativity that we sense in our lives, that was all created for us. So if we took a few minutes every day just to go in that, and then internalize it to a point where we're connecting 
and thinking about our own soul's growth and what am I really feeling? What am I really hearing? What is it that I really want to do out in the world that up until now I thought was just a dream? That up until now I thought it was the thing somebody else was going to do when all along I've had the ability to do it. If I step up, grow up, become self-sufficient, stop depending on others and really step into my soul. And so that's what's going to start happening with this eclipse. I know it sounds like a lot, but this is a new episode in our evolution.